Good afternoon. Today we'd like to introduce you the next pharmacology lecture, Drugs Affecting Blood and Blood Formation. But before the lecture, I would like to ask you to join the donations to the Ukrainian army to fight against the aggressor. The whole world is witnessing what is happening in Ukraine, and any donation will help the Ukrainian military forces in this difficult time. You can donate any amount to the Come Back Alive Foundation using the links on the slide and in the video description, or you can make a donation using PayPal service to this YouTube channel, and I will send all your donations to help the Ukrainian army. Links to donations are in the description of this video. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine. Lecture plan. General considerations. Classification of drugs affecting hemostasis. Stimulators of platelets aggregation, direct coagulants, indirect coagulants, inhibitors of fibrinolysis, antiplatelet drugs, direct anticoagulants, indirect anticoagulants, fibrinolytics, thrombolytics, and drugs affecting hemopoiesis. Let's start from general considerations. Hemostasis. Hemostasis, arrest of blood loss, and blood coagulation involve complex interactions between the injured vessel wall, platelets, and coagulation factors. A cascading series of proteolytic reactions is started by first, contact activation of Hagemann factor, intrinsic system in which all factors needed for coagulation are present in plasma. This pathway is responsible for clotting when blood is kept in a glass tube and for amplification of the common pathway. This is slow and takes several minutes to activate factor 10. And second, tissue thromboplastin. Extrinsic system needs a tissue factor but activates factor 10 in seconds. The figures on the next slides represent the text above. In the normal course, coagulation after injury to the vessel wall occurs by this pathway. The subsequent events are common in the two systems and result in the polymerization of fibrinogen to form fibrin strands. Blood cells are trapped in the meshwork of fibrin strands producing clot. And on this slide you can see the schematic depiction of the coagulation cascade. The vitamin K dependent factors have been encircled in here, in here, in here and in here. Factors inactivated by heparin in red, in here, in here, in here, and also in here, in here, and in here. The more important inhibited steps are highlighted by thick arrow. And in here you can see the alternative picture of coagulation cascade. You can pause this slide and check it for a longer time. Steps of hemostasis primary hemostasis, vasoconstriction, adhesion of platelets, aggregation of platelets, and secondary hemostasis, coagulation, cascade of biochemical reactions to activate factors of coagulation, thrombin from prothrombin, fibrin from fibrinogen. This finally results in fibrinolysis. Most clotting factors are proteins present in plasma in the inactive zymogen form. By partial proteolysis, they themselves become an active protease and activate the next factor. In addition to its critical role in cleaving and polymerizing fibrinogen, thrombin activates many upstream factors, especially factor 11, 8 and 5 of the intrinsic and common pathways, amplifying its own generation and continuation of clot formation. It is also a potent activator of platelets. On the other hand, factors like antithrombin, protein C, protein S, antithromboplastin, and the fibrinolysin system tend to oppose coagulation and lyse formed clot. Thus, a check and balance system operates to maintain blood in a fluid state while in circulation and allows rapid hemostasis following injury. Factors which promote blood fluidity, normal hemostasis, natural anticoagulants, protein C, protein S, antithrombin 3, endothelial derived antiplatelet substances, nitric oxide and prostacycline, and fibrinolytic system clot busters, plasmin, plasminogen, tissue plasminogen activator, TPA. Few words about clinical thrombosis. More than 2.5 million cases of deep venous thrombosis annually. More than 600,000 cases of pulmonary embolism per year. More than 50,000 deaths per year from pulmonary embolism. 
more than 11,000 post-surgical pulmonary embolism deaths per year. Rationale for antithrombotic therapy Thrombogenesis, vascular injury, therapy, reduce risk factors. Thrombogenesis, platelet adherence and activation, therapy, platelet inhibitors. Thrombogenesis, thrombin generation and fibrin formation, therapy, anticoagulants. Thrombogenesis, plasmin generation and fibrinolysis, fibrinolytics. From the previous slide results that we can classify three types of antithrombotic therapies. Antiplatelet therapy, anticoagulant therapy and thrombolytic therapy. The second part of our lecture is classification of drugs affecting hemostasis. We can classify all drugs and pharmacological groups to two sides. On the left side you can see those groups and drugs which are stimulating hemostasis and on the right side you can see those groups and drugs which are inhibiting hemostasis. If to talk very general then those which are on the left side they are indicated for bleeding and they have the side effect thrombosis and those which are on the right side are indicated for thrombosis and may have a side effect bleeding. There are three main targets on which these drugs are targeting. First, aggregation, second, coagulation, and third, fibrinolysis. On the left side, you can see that those drugs which are acting on aggregation, we can call them as stimulators of platelet aggregation, are etamzylate and herbal drugs. Coagulation acting ones we can divide into direct coagulants, fibrinogen and calcium chloride, and indirect coagulants, menadione, or commercial name, Vicasol. And third, fibrinolysis. And here we can see inhibitors of fibrinolysis, for example, aminocaproic acid and aproteinine. Once again, on the right side, you see those drugs which are inhibiting hemostasis. And here, those drugs which are targeting aggregation are antiplatelet drugs, first of all. And here you can see clopidogrel, acetylsalicylic acid, dipiridamol, tirofiban, abciximab. Those which are targeting coagulation, you can see direct anticoagulants, which are heparin, enoxaparin, recombinant human activated protein C, and indirect anticoagulants, for example, coumarin or neodicumarin, and warfarin. And targeting fibrinolysis, these are fibrinolytics or thrombolytics, alteplase, streptokinase, and urokinase. Today we will discuss all these groups and the main representatives of them in details. And the next part of our lecture is stimulators of platelets aggregation. These are these drugs, etamzylate and herbal drugs. Let's start from herbal drugs. These are urtica, viburnum, arnica, polygonum hydropiper, hippocastanum, gingo biloba, and etamzylate. Etamzylate acts by increasing the stability of capillary endothelium and promoting platelet adhesion, also inhibit the biosynthesis and action of those prostaglandins that cause platelet disaggregation, vasodilation and increased capillary permeability. Pharmacological group of this drug is hemostatic, stimulator of aggregation of platelets. Pharmacological effect – hemostatic, mechanism of action – inhibits PGI2 synthesis, stimulates the formation of platelets, indications – prevention and treatment of acute bleeding, side effects – thrombosis, thromboembolism, and hypotension. The next part of our lecture is direct coagulants. These are drugs which we see on the left side in green – fibrinogen and calcium chloride. They are divided into topical hemostatics, for example, fibrinogen and a hemostatic sponge, and coagulation factors, calcium chloride, factor 7A, factor 8, factor 9, and combination drugs. Let's tap on fibrinogen. The fibrinogen fraction of human plasma is employed to control bleeding in hemophilia, antihemophilic globulin, AHG deficiency, and acute afibrinogenemic states. 0.5 grams is infused intravenously. The drug Fibrinal, 0.5 grams bottle for IV infusion. The next is calcium chloride, pharmacological group direct coagulant, intravenous fluid, 
Pharmacological effect coagulant. Mechanism of action participates in the coagulation cascade as factor 4. Indications bleeding, supplementary treatment only. Hypocalcemia, for example, hypoparathyroidism, tetany, osteoporosis, supplementary treatment only, magnesium poisoning, magnesium sulfate poisoning antidote. Side effects thrombosis, hypercalcemia, calcification of soft tissues, hypotension, arrhythmia, flushes, necrosis at the injection site. The next part of our lecture is indirect coagulants. These are drugs which you see on the left, specifically one drug which is menadiol, and the commercial name of it is Vicasol. Let's start from vitamin K because it plays a role in the mechanism of action of this drug. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble dietary principle required for the synthesis of clotting factors. Vitamin K acts as a cofactor at a late stage in the synthesis by liver of coagulation proteins, protrombin, factors 7, 9 and 10. The vitamin K dependent change, carboxylation of glutamate residues from these zymogen proteins, see figures below, in here on the left, confers on them the capacity to bind calcium and to get bound to phospholipid surfaces, properties essential for participation in the coagulation cascade. Once again, in here you can see the picture of mechanism of action of oral anticoagulants, and in here you can see the drugs which are vitamin K drugs. In here, vitamin K drugs, K1 from plants, fat-soluble, fetonadione, and K3 synthetic, which are subdivided into fat-soluble, menadione and acetomenophtone, and water-soluble, menadione sodium bisulfite, menadione sodium diphosphate. And in here on the right side, you can see in which commercial names drugs these substances are included. Menadione, or the commercial name Vicasol. Pharmacological group indirect coagulant, vitamin K drug. Pharmacological effect coagulant. Mechanism of action being a synthetic analog of vitamin K, it stimulates the synthesis of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Indications prevention of bleeding, treatment of chronic bleeding, indirect anticoagulant overdose. So, this Vicasol or Menadione you can prescribe in cases of overdose of indirect acting anticoagulants. And side effects, thrombosis, thromboembolism. And here to remind you on the example of this coagulation cascade, those factors on which Vicasol is acting on. In here you can see 2, 7, 9 and 10. The next part of our lecture is inhibitors of fibrinolysis. These are these drugs on the left, which are amino caproic acid and aproteinine. Also, we can classify them into direct action, which is aproteinine, and indirect action drugs, amino caproic acid. And here you can see the pictures of these drugs. Amino caproic acid, or epsilon amino caproic acid, tranexamic acid, and aproteinine. Pharmacological group of these drugs, inhibitor of fibrinolysis, pharmacological effect hemostatic, mechanism of action prevents activation of plasminogen, indications prevention and treatment of acute bleeding, side effects thrombosis, thromboembolism, hypotension and arrhythmia. Aminocaproic acid, epsilon aminocaproic acid, it is a lysine analog which combines with the lysine binding sites of plasminogen and plasmine so that the latter is not able to bind to fibrin and lyse it. It is a specific antidote for fibrinolytic agents and has been used in many hyperplasminemic states associated with excessive intravascular fibrinolysis resulting in bleeding. The primary indication is to counteract the effect of fibrinolytic drugs and bleeding due to their use. In hemophiliacs, it has adjunctive value for controlling bleeding due to tooth extraction, prostatectomy, trauma, etc. In hematuria, it can cause ureteric obstruction by the unlysed cloth. Therefore, fibrinolysis must be established firmly before using it. It can cause intravascular thrombosis. Rapid IV injection results in hypotension, bradycardia, and may be arrhythmias. It should be used cautiously when renal function is impaired. Myopathy occurs rarely. 
the large dose needed is a limitation and tranexamic acid is mostly preferred. Initial premium dose is 5 grams oral IV, followed by 1 gram hourly till bleeding stops, maximum 30 grams in 24 hours. Trade names are Amicar, Hemocid, Hamostad, 0.5 grams tablets, 1.25 grams 5 ml syrup, and 5 grams in 20 ml injection. The next part of our lecture is antiplatelet drugs. These are these drugs on the right side. Clopidogrel, still salicylic acid, dipiridomol, tirofiban, apsiximab. Let's continue with general description and mechanism of action of antiplatelet drugs. Platelets express several glycoprotein integrin receptors on their surface. Reactive proteins like collagen are exposed when there is damage to vascular endothelium and they react respectively with platelet receptors. This results in platelet activation and release of proaggregatory and vasoconstrictor mediators like TXA2, ADP and 5-HT. The platelet GB2B3A receptor undergoes a conformational change favoring binding of fibrinogen and volvilbrand factor that cross-link platelets, inducing aggregation and encourage to vessel wall other surfaces. Thus, a platelet plug is formed. In veins, due to sluggish blood flow, a fibrinous tail is formed which traps red blood cells, the red tail. In arteries, platelet mass is the main constituent of the thrombus. Antiplatelet drugs are therefore more useful in arterial thrombosis, while anticoagulants are more effective in venous thrombosis. Prostacycline PGI2, synthesized in the intima of blood vessels, is a strong inhibitor of platelet aggregation. A balance between thromboxane A2 released from platelets and PGI2 released from vessel wall appears to control intravascular thrombus formation. Platelets also play a role in atherogenesis. Antiplatelet drugs. These are drugs that interfere with platelet function and are useful in the prophylaxis of thromboembolic disorders. They are classified to cyclooxygenase 1 inhibitors, which inhibit COX, acetylsalicylic acid or aspirin, ADP receptor blockers, which inhibit ADP, clopidogrel, active metabolite, and ticlopidine, Phosphodiesterase inhibitors, which inhibit phosphodiesterase and increase CAMP, dipiridomol, and glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors, inhibitors of the protein-protein interaction between fibrinogen and the platelet, tirofiban and apsiximab. And here you can see the schematic depiction of action of these drugs. And here you can see acetylsalicylic acid and its interaction in the process of formation of thromboxane A2. And here, for example, dipiridomol, its inhibition of phosphodiesterase and the release of CIMP. And here, ticlopidine and clopidogrel and the site of action on ADP receptors. And in here, abciximab and other drugs, inhibitors of glycoprotein 2B3A. Clopidogrel. Pharmacological group antiplatelet, pharmacological effect antiplatelet. Mechanism of action blocks ADP receptors of platelets. Indications prevention of thrombosis after myocardial infarction or ischemic stroke, and side effects bleeding. Additional characteristics about clopidogrel. First, it interferes with glycoprotein 2B3A binding site. Second, exerts its action for the life of the platelet. Third, may prolong bleeding time. Fourth, indicated for the prevention of myocardial infarction, cerebrovascular accident, and vascular death. Fifth, fewer side effects than ticlopidine. And sixth, dose 75 mg daily. Dipiridomol. It inhibits phosphodiesterase, as well as blocks uptake of adenosine to increase platelet CMP, which in turn potentiates PGI2 and interferes with aggregation. Levels of thromboxane A2 or PGI2 are not altered, but platelet survival time reduced by disease is normalized. Dipiridomol improves the response to warfarin, along with which it is used to decrease the incidence of thromboembolism in patients with prosthetic heart valves. Dipiridomol has also been used to enhance the antiplatelet action of aspirin. 
This combination may additionally lower the risk of stroke in patients with transient ischemic attacks, but trials have failed to demonstrate additional benefit in prophylaxis of myocardial infarction. Dose 150 to 300 mg day. The next one is aspirin, low dose indications. I would like to remind you that aspirin in these conditions is used in low dose, up to 100 mg. So indications are first stroke and transient ischemic attacks, second myocardial infarction, recurrent myocardial infarction, third unstable angina, and fourth CABG potency, coronary artery bypass graft. In here below you can see the description about coronary artery bypass graft. Ticlopidine. First, it interferes with platelet fibrinogen binding. Second, exerts its action for the life of the platelet. Third, may prolong bleeding time. Fourth, useful for coronary artery stents and CVA, cerebrovascular accident. Five, methylprednisolone may reverse its effect. Six, associated with TTP, thrombocytopenic purpura, neutropenia, and diarrhea. Upsiximab. First, human mounts monoclonal antibodies. Second, binds to glycoprotein 2B3A receptor on platelets. Half-life 10 minutes. May block receptor for 10 days. Indicated for the prevention of closure of coronary vessels after angioplasty. May cause thrombocytopenia. And used with heparin and acetylsalicylic acid. And here you can see some pictures of these drugs. And the next part of our lecture is direct anticoagulants. These are these drugs which you see on the right side, heparin and oxaparin, recombinant human activated protein C. Recombinant human activated protein C, drotrecogene alpha activated and the trade name Xigris. Indicated for severe sepsis in adults with acute organ dysfunction with a high risk of death, antithrombotic properties, anti-inflammatory properties, profibrinolytic properties, and serious bleeding is a major side effect. Heparin and low molecular weight heparins. These drugs are used to prevent thrombosis. These drugs used to treat thrombosis only in high doses. They act by activating plasma antithrombin 3. Drugs are heparin and from low molecular weight heparins, enoxaparin, nadroparin, daltaparin, reviparin, parnaparin, and ardeparin. Let's talk about antithrombin-3, which becomes activated with the use of these drugs. Antithrombin-3 inhibits the following serine proteases. Coagulation, factor 12A, factor 11A, factor 9A, and factor 10A, and thrombin. And fibrinolysis, plasmin. Inhibitory activity against all these enzymes is substantially accelerated by heparin. Heparin. It was discovered in 1916 by McLean. Howell and Holt in 1918 named it heparin because it was obtained from the liver. It could be used clinically only in 1937 when a sufficient degree of purification was achieved. An ionic glycosaminoglycan available as calcium or sodium salt, negative charge. Molecular weight is 15,000 in average or in the diapason from 3,000 to 30,000. Prepared from porcine intestinal mucosa and bovine lung, doesn't cross the placenta, little interaction with other medications, IV or subcutaneous administration only, reversible with antagonist protamine sulfate, positive charge. Pharmacological group of heparin is direct acting anticoagulant, pharmacological effect anticoagulant, Mechanism of action. It activates antithrombin 3, which neutralizes factors 2, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and in high doses or parenteral administration also activates fibrinolysis. Indications, prevention and treatment of thrombosis and thromboembolism. More details are on the next slide. Side effects, bleeding, hemorrhage, thrombocytopenia, and osteoporosis. So, indications of heparin in more details. Full dose, 5,000 units or 80 units kilogram IV bolus, followed by 1,200 to 1,600 units each hour, adjusted to a therapeutic range. Used for acute deep venous thrombosis, 
pulmonary emboli, unstable angina and myocardial infarction. Low dose, 5,000 units subcutaneous each 12 hours. Used for post-operative prophylaxis of any major abdominal, thoracic, gynecologic or orthopedic procedure. Immobilized medical patients more than 40 years with CHF, CVA, malignant disease. Prophylaxis for underlying hypercoagulable state. And other doses are used for extracorporeal bypass, hemodialysis and after thrombolytic therapy. About pregnancy, heparin can be used in pregnancy. Contraindications of heparin, thrombocytopenia, aspirin or alcohol use, hepatic or renal disease, other platelet dysfunction, GI bleeding, tumors. Side effects of heparin, major side effect is bleeding, osteoporosis with prolonged use, thrombocytopenia. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia occurs in 2-5% of patients receiving standard heparin by an immune mechanism, may occur with minute doses, including heparin flushes, more common with bovine than porcine heparin. Asymptomatic thrombocytopenia can occur in 30-50% to of patients who develop HIT, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, antibodies. And approximately from 20-50% to of thrombocytopenic patients develop arterial or venous thrombosis that may be life-threatening. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia usually appears from 3 to 15 days after starting heparin, peak incidence day 8. Diagnosis is largely clinical despite the availability of several tests used to attempt confirmation. Low molecular weight heparins. Molecular weight from 3000 to 7000 inhibits factor 10A rather than thrombin. Factor 10A assay used for monitoring. Administered subcutaneously two times a day. Probably less antigenic than standard heparin. Recommended for prophylaxis and treatment. And on this table you can see some indications and contraindications to parenteral anticoagulant agents. And here you can find, for example, unfractionated heparin. Is class antithrombin 3 inhibitor and approved and appropriate indications. Treatment of venous thromboembolism or unstable angina used when rapid reversal is important. Also, in here you can find enoxaparin, low molecular weight heparin. Prophylaxis in moderate risk or high risk patients. Treatment of venous thromboembolism or unstable angina. Also, daltaparin, low molecular weight heparin. Prophylaxis in moderate risk or high risk patients, treatment of venous thromboembolism or unstable angina, and tinzaparin, low molecular weight heparin, prophylaxis in moderate risk or high risk patients, treatment of venous thromboembolism. Heparin antibiotic interactions. Heparin has got some antibiotic interactions on which I would like to stop with you. The cephalosporins, cephamandol, cefotetan, and cefoperazone contain an N-methyl teotetrazole NMTT side chain. This NMTT group can dissociate from the parent antibiotic in solution or in vivo and competitively inhibit vitamin K action, leading to prolongation of the prothrombin time and bleeding, and also this side chain is associated with a disulfiram-like reaction to alcohol. Disulfiram-like reactions and alcoholism and alcohol itself we discussed in lecture 6 when we were talking about general anesthetics and alcohols. Heparin antagonist. I would like to remind you once again that heparin has got its specific antagonist, protamine sulfate. Protamine sulfate is given intravenously and it neutralizes heparin milligram for milligram. It means that 1 mg of protamine sulfate is needed for every 100 units of heparin. Heparin is dosed in units of action. And the next part of our lecture is indirect anticoagulants. These are the drugs on the right side, coumarin, neodicumarin and warfarin. I would like to remind you the plasma half-lives of vitamin K dependent clotting factors because these drugs has got a mechanism connection with vitamin K. Factor 2, 60 hours. Factor 7, 6 hours. Factor 9, 24 hours. Factor 10, 30 hours. Protein C, 6 hours. And protein S, 42 hours. Let's start with coumarin, decoumarin and neodecoumarin. 
Kumarin was isolated by Ling in 1939 after the previous observation that cattle developed the bleeding disorder after ingestion of spawned clover. It is a 4-hydroxycumarin compound, similar in structure to vitamin K, has rapid GI absorption, crosses placenta easily, so this can cause complications, and interacts with a variety of drugs. Actions of coumarin blocks the carboxylation of the vitamin K-dependent clotting proteins, factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, maintaining them in their inactive forms, blocks the anticoagulant proteins, C and S, onset 18 to 48 hours. Side effects of coumarin, hemorrhage, fetal abnormalities, skin necrosis with deficiencies of protein C or S, usually on the third to eighth day of therapy. Coumarin skin necrosis. Let's stop for a few minutes on coumarin skin necrosis. Most patients with coumarin necrosis have low levels of protein C, a serine protease that has anticoagulant and fibrinolytic activity. In the presence of coumarin, levels of protein C fall more rapidly than do procoagulant factors 9, 10 and prothrombin. Therefore, when coumarin is given to a patient with low levels of protein C, a transient hypercoagulable state can develop, causing local thrombosis of dermal vessels. Coumarin necrosis is most likely to occur in patients in whom large initial doses of coumarin, greater than 10 mg, have been initiated in the absence of heparin anticoagulation. Coumarin-induced skin necrosis usually occurs on days 3-8 after initiation of coumarin, more common in females, 75%, most common on the breast, buttocks or extremities, and on the penis in men, not predictable by history or protein C level. Interactions of coumarin. Coumarin has got some interactions with some drugs. Drugs which are potentiators of coumarin are phenylbutazone, cimetidine, omeprazole, amiodarone, and anabolic steroids, and antagonists of coumarin are barbiturates, rifampin, penicillins, and antacids. The next is warfarin. First of all, short description about warfarin. It is indirect anticoagulant. Pharmacological effect of it is anticoagulant. Mechanism of action inhibits the synthesis of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Indications prevention of thrombosis after myocardial infarction or ischemic stroke. Side effects bleeding and hemorrhage. And in here on the example of this coagulation cascade, you can see in here these factors. Factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, and factor 10. Warfarin and its congeners act as anticoagulants only in vivo, not in vitro, because they act indirectly by interfering with the synthesis of vitamin K-dependent clotting factors in liver. They apparently behave as competitive antagonists of vitamin K and lower the plasma levels of functional clotting factors in a dose-dependent manner. In fact, they inhibit the enzyme vitamin K epoxide reductase and interfere with the regeneration of the active hydroquinone form of vitamin K, which acts as a cofactor for the enzyme hamaglutamyl carboxylase that carries out the final step of gamma carboxylating glutamase residues of prothrombin and factors 7, 9, and 10. This carboxylation is essential for the ability of the clotting factors to bind calcium and to get bound to phospholipid surfaces necessary for the coagulation sequence to proceed. Factor 7 has the shortest plasma half-life, 6 hours. Its level falls first when warfarin is given, followed by factor 9, half-life is 24 hours, factor 10, 40 hours, and protrombin, 60 hours. The therapeutic effect occurs when the synthesis of clotting factors is reduced by 40-50%. And in here you can see the schematic depiction of warfarin inhibition of epoxide reductase. Warfarin inhibits formation of the active form of vitamin K. Inset shows structure of human vitamin K epoxide reductase with warfarin. About pregnancy, warfarin cannot be used in pregnancy. Contraindication towards administration of anticoagulants of indirect action. Hemorrhagic diathesis, ulcer of stomach and duodenum, ulcerative colitis, pregnancy, malignant formations, disturbance of functions of kidneys and liver. 
and in here you can see pharmacokinetic and adverse effect profiles of other oral anticoagulants. In here you can find drugs, their half-life, duration of action in days, dose, loading and maintenance, and adverse side effects other than bleeding. You can pause this slide and check this information. And the next part of our lecture is fibrinolytics, thrombolytics. These are the drugs which you can see on the right side, fibrinolytics, thrombolytics, alteplase, streptokinase and urokinase. Alteplase, streptokinase, urokinase and also retoplase and tenecteplase. These are drugs used to lyse thrombi, clot, to recanalize occluded blood vessels, mainly coronary artery. They are therapeutic rather than prophylactic and work by activating the natural fibrinolytic system. Hemostatic plug of platelets formed at the site of injury to blood vessels is reinforced by fibrin deposition to form a thrombus. Once the repair is over, the fibrinolytic system is activated to remove the fibrin. The enzyme responsible for digesting fibrin is a serine protease plasmin generated from plasminogen by tissue plasminogen activator TPA, which is produced primarily by vascular endothelium. Plasminogen circulates in plasma as well as remains bound to fibrin. The TPA selectively activates fibrin-bound plasminogen within the thrombus, and any plasmin that leaks is inactivated by circulating antiplasmins. Fibrin-bound plasmin is not inactivated by antiplasmins because of common binding site for a both fibrin and antiplasmin. The TPA itself is inactivated by plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and 2. PAI1, PAI2. When excessive amounts of plasminogen are activated by administered fibrinolytics, the alpha-2 antiplasmin is exhausted and active plasmin persists in plasma. Plasmin is a rather non-specific protease, degrades coagulation factors including fibrinogen and some other plasma proteins as well. Thus, activation of circulating plasminogen induces a lytic state whose major complication is hemorrhage. Even selective activation of thrombus-bound plasmin can cause bleeding by dissolving physiological thrombi. Pharmacodynamics of fibrinolytic drugs After introduction into the organism, they cause lysis of fresh 24 to 72 hours, thrombi in arteries, veins, cavities. They are most effective during the first 2-3 hours after initiation of thrombosis. Administration of fibrinolytics Thrombosis, thromboembolia of lungs, brain, eye retina, myocardial infarction, thrombosis of profound veins. Heparin often used after initial thrombolytic therapy. Side effects of fibrinolytics, hemorrhages, clotting time, fibrinogen content should be under the constant control, allergic reactions, phase hyperemia, abdominal pain, pain behind the sternum, chill, raised body temperature, these are reactions on foreign protein, contraindications, hemorrhagic diatesis, hemorrhages, open wounds, ulcer disease, nephritis, acute form of TBC, X-ray disease. The next part of our lecture is drugs affecting hemopoiesis. We call these drugs as hematinics. These are substances required in the formation of blood and are used for the treatment of anemias. Anemia occurs when the balance between production and destruction of red blood cells is distributed by blood loss, acute or chronic, impaired red cell formation due to deficiency of essential factors, for example iron, vitamin B12, folic acid, and bone marrow depression, hypoplastic anemia, and erythropoietin deficiency and also increased destruction of red blood cells, hemolytic anemia. Iron. Iron has for long been considered important for the body. Calcinated iron has been used in ancient Indian medicine. According to Greek thought, Mars is the god of strength and iron is dedicated to Mars. As such, iron was used to treat weakness, which is common in anemia. In 1713, iron was shown to be present in the body. In the early 19th century, Blood developed his famous blood spill consisting of ferrous sulfate and potassium carbonate for anemia. All important aspects of iron metabolism have been learned in the past 70 years. 
Daily requirement of iron. To make good average daily loss, iron requirements are adult male from 0.5 to 1 mg, adult female menstruating from 1 to 2 mg, infants 60 micrograms each kilogram, children 25 micrograms each kilogram, pregnancy last two trimesters from 3 to 5 mg. Dietary sources of iron. Rich with iron are liver, egg yolk, oyster, dry beans, dry fruit, wheat germ, yeast, medium, meat, chicken, fish, spinach, banana, apple, poor, milk and its products, root vegetables. And here you can see the pictures of some products. Meat, soybeans, dry smoked plums, spinach, dry apricots, buckwheat, rice, bread, fruits of pomegranate. Iron from animal products absorbs much more better than from plants, 22% and 1%. Iron sulfate, iron polymaltose. Pharmacological group anti-anemic, pharmacological effect anti-anemic. Mechanism of action provides iron for hemoglobin synthesis. Indications iron deficiency anemia. Side effects diarrhea, constipation, staining of teeth. Four parenteral forms hypotension, tachycardia. And here you can see some combination preparations of iron. And here on the left side some trade names of drugs. In the middle the main iron compound in this drug. And on the right side other ingredients included in this drug. And here the continuation, also the same logic. On the left side the trade name, in the middle the main iron compound, and on the right side the other compounds in this drug. Uses. First is iron deficiency anemia. It is the most important indication for medicinal iron. Iron deficiency is the commonest cause of anemia, especially in developing countries where a sizable percentage of the population is anemic. The red blood cells are microcytic and hypochromic due to deficient hemoglobin synthesis. Other metabolic manifestations are seen when iron deficiency is severe. Apart from nutritional deficiency, chronic bleeding from GI tract, ulcers, inflammatory bowel disease, hookworm infestation is a common cause. Iron deficiency also accompanies repeated attacks of malaria and chronic inflammatory diseases. The cause of iron deficiency should be identified and treated. Iron should be normally administered orally. Parenteral therapy is to be reserved for special circumstances. And second, megaloblastic anemia. When brisk hemopoiesis is induced by vitamin B12 or folate therapy, iron deficiency may be unmasked. The iron status of these patients should be evaluated and iron is given accordingly. And also miscellaneous adjuvant hematinics. First is copper. Copper is interfered in copper deficiency. However, copper is a trace metal for men and clinical deficiency is very rare. Its routine use is therefore not justified. However, when copper deficiency is demonstrated, 0.5 to 5 mg of copper sulfate a day may be given therapeutically. The prophylactic dose is 0.1 mg a day. It is present in some hematinic combinations. Check the table in the previous slides if you are interested in which combinations copper is included. The second pyridoxin. Pyridoxine responsive anemia is a rare entity. It is due to inherent abnormality in heme synthesis. Sideroblastic anemia associated with isoniazid and pyrazinamide therapy, which interfere with pyridoxine metabolism and action, needs to be treated with pyridoxine. Some other sideroblastic anemias show partial involvement with large doses of pyridoxine. However, routine use of pyridoxine in anemia is wasteful. Maturation factors. Deficiency of vitamin B12 and folic acid, which are B-group vitamins, result in megaloblastic anemia characterized by the presence of large red cell precursors in bone marrow and their large and short-lived progeny in peripheral blood. Vitamin B12 and folic acid are therefore called maturation factors. The basic defect is in DNA synthesis. Apart from hemopoietic cells, other rapidly proliferating tissues also suffer. Drugs of vitamin B12 Cyanocobalamin, 
35 micrograms 5 milliliter liquid, hydroxocobalamin 500 micrograms 1000 micrograms injections, and methylcobalamin 0.5 milligrams tablet and 0.5 milligrams in 1 milliliter injection. Uses treatment of vitamin B12 deficiency, prophylaxis, tobacco amblyopia. Mega doses of vitamin B12 has been used in neuropathies, psychiatric disorders, cutaneous sarcoid, and as a general tonic to allay fatigue and improve growth. The value of such therapy is questionable. Folic acid. Dietary sources of folic acid are liver, green leafy vegetable, spinach, egg, meat, yeast. It is synthesized by gut flora, but this is largely unavailable for absorption. Daily requirement of an adult is less than 0.1 mg, but dietary allowance of 0.2 mg a day is recommended. During pregnancy, lactation or any condition or high metabolic activity, 0.8 mg a day is considered appropriate. Preparations and dose. Folic acid, folvit, folitab. 5 mg tablet. Liquid oral preparations and injectables are available only in combination formulation. Oral therapy is adequate except when malabsorption is present or in severely ill patients, given I am in these cases. Dose therapeutic 2 to 5 mg a day, prophylactic 0.5 mg a day. And folinic acid, calcium leucovarin 3 mg ml injection, fastovarin 3 mg 15 mg ampules 50 mg vial and recovarin 15 mg tablets 15 mg and 50 mg vial for injection uses megaloblastic anemias prophylaxis metotrexate toxicity citrovorum factor rescue and to enhance anti-cancer efficacy of 5 fluorouracil and erythropoietin Erythropoietin is a sialoglycoprotein hormone produced by peritubular cells of the kidney that is essential for normal erythropoiesis. Anemia and hypoxia are sensed by kidney cells and induce rapid secretion of EPO, which acts on erythroid marrow. Epoietin alpha beta, it is recombinant human erythropoietin, administered by IV or subcutaneous injection and has a plasma half-life of 6 to 10 hours, but action lasts several days. Uses anemia of chronic renal failure, anemia in AIDS patients treated with zidovudin, cancer hemotherapy induced anemia, preoperative increased blood production for autologous transfusion during surgery. And darbepoietin alpha. Darbepoietin alpha, this is a hyperglycosylated modified preparation of EPO that has a half life of 24 to 36 hours and is longer acting than epoietin. Accordingly, it needs to be injected once a week and is more convenient. Indications, efficacy and adverse effects are similar to epoetin. Dose, initially 0.45 micrograms kilograms subcutaneously or IV once a week. Dose to be adjusted later according to rising in hemoglobin level. And the last part of our lecture is examples of MCQs. A patient with a history of myocardial infarction receives 75 mg of acetylsalicylic acid a day. What is the purpose of this therapy? As I told you before, aspirin is used in low doses, less than 100 mg, if you would like to inhibit the platelet aggregation. So this will be the correct option, inhibition of platelet aggregation. A 51-year-old patient with tenocardia or angina has been administered acetylsalicylic acid. What is the purpose of acetylsalicylic acid used in this case? And here is a similar MCQ and of course the correct answer will be antiplatelet effect. A 45-year-old patient has been taking neodicumarine for thrombophlebitis for two weeks. The regular blood test revealed a decrease in prothrombin concentration, microhematuria. Which drug should be used as a neodicumarin antagonist? You need to find the drug which will be antagonist by the mechanism of action interaction with neodicumarin. If you remember the pharmacological group of neodicumarin, you need to find the antagonistic pharmacological group. And the drug in this case, of course, is Vicasol as non-direct coagulant. Which vitamin can mask the symptoms of pernicious anemia by alleviating the anemia but not preventing the neurological damage?
And here the correct answer will be folic acid. It is the only option which can mask the symptoms of pernicious anemia by alleviating the anemia, but not preventing the neurological damage. After the examination of a 40-year-old man, the diagnosis of hypochromic anemia was made. What drug should be prescribed for this patient? In this case, you need to search for iron-containing drug, and from all options, it is only Fercoven. A pregnant woman's blood analysis revealed megaloblasts and a high color index. The diagnosis is megaloblastic anemia. What drug should be prescribed to the patient? As this woman blood analysis revealed megaloblasts and a high color index and the diagnosis is megaloblastic anemia, you need to find the drug for the treatment of megaloblastic anemia. Of course, it is cyanocobalamine. A patient with thrombophlebitis is administered the complex therapy which influences different stages of clot forming. Which of the given substances contributes to the restoration of the vascular permeability? As in here this complex therapy influences different stages of clot forming, your correct option will be fibrinolysine. Some drug has been prescribed to the patient with thromboembolism of lower extremities veins. In two days, hemorrhages appeared on his skin. What drug was prescribed to the patient? So, in this case, we are searching for anticoagulant of direct action, which can be used in thromboembolism of lower extremities veins. So, the answer is heparin. An 8-year-old child is being prescribed for tonsillectomy. The analysis of blood had showed that the time of blood coagulation is increased up to 7 minutes. What drug should be included, 5 days before the operation, into the complex of therapeutic agents of the preparatory period first of all? And here you are searching non-direct acting coagulant, which can be used for prevention of bleedings. So the answer is Vicasol. Vicasol is prescribed to a patient during several days before planned surgery concerning an ulcer of stomach. What is the mechanism of Vicasol action? It is also the MCQ connected with Vicasol, but in here you must find the mechanism of action. And the correct answer is here is E. Drug increases blood clotting in the result of increasing of prothrombin synthesis. A patient with myocardial infarction is delivered to resuscitation unit. What drug should be administered to the patient for prevention of thrombi formation? In here you need to find the drug to prevent thrombi formation, so of course your correct answer will be heparin. Before finishing the lecture, I would like to remind you about donations and don't forget to subscribe for the channel, please. Thank you for the attention.